Hello, folks. Welcome to Kubernetes on the Edge Day. My name is Keith Basil, and I'm the Vice President of Product for Cloud Native Infrastructure at SUSE. I also help shape SUSE's global edge strategy, and I'm here to talk to you about edge today. I'd like to thank KubeCon and the CNCF organizers for this opportunity to present. And with that, let's get started. So I wanted to build on the quote that was given by the Linux Foundation. And here it says, the edge computing space will be four times larger than cloud and will generate 75% of the data worldwide by 2025. That's a very bold statement. And with that statement, it gives us quite a bit of runway to work into that space as we move forward. So walk with me, if you will. If you can imagine a global deployment of 7,500 remote locations, and within those locations, you've got 1,000 industrial IoT devices at each one of those locations, right? So when you do the math, you're looking at 7.5 million things that need to be orchestrated and managed at the edge. And so what I want, I, the big takeaway here is that the law of large numbers is absolutely at play here, and we need to be ready to scale to meet that challenge. And so to add to that complexity, we're seeing deep and diverse edge scenarios. And this goes from underwater deployments all the way up to satellites in space and everything in between. And so Kubernetes is being used to manage cloud native applications everywhere across that spectrum. And so within our ecosystem here, we have the facilities to tackle this challenge. And before we dive into that, let's establish a framework for defining what the edge is, because everybody has a different, a different definition of edge, right? And so collectively, we found it very useful to establish this baseline definition of edge so that we can have meaningful and relevant discussions going forward. And so the first thing I want to uh, to walk through here is what we call the near edge. So um, just walk with me for a second. Off to the left-hand side of the screen is the centralized services, large data centers, and the like. So that's where all the centralized services are today. And so as you move from left to right, you get closer and closer to the edge. And the first thing that we run into is what we call the near edge. This is absolutely the realm of the communications service providers, right? And so you've got the telcos here, you've got multi-service operators, the cable companies who provide voice, video, and data. You've got a movement called MEC, multi-access edge computing. So these MEC deployments are actually very interesting because we're seeing demand for MEC solutions that support what's on the right-hand side of that line of demarcation there. And th there's a few things here that are nuanced in the diagram that I wanna uh, expand on. So number one, the border around that near edge definition is meant to represent two things. One, it's meant to represent the logical network, the IP space, if you will, for that segment. And it's also meant to represent the infrastructure that's within that segment. And the biggest differentiator that, at, um, that supports the definition of the near edge is who owns and operates the IP space and who owns and operates the infrastructure that's within that space. And here, again, as I said, this is the realm of the telcos, right? And the last thing I wanna call out is that that line of demarcation is critical because there are some edge solutions or applications where the communications providers are providing appliances that go up to and sit on that line of demarcation. And if we go back to that IP space definition, the IP space that's attached to that, to, attached to that device is managed by the communication service provider. In fact, that gear is typically owned by them and they offer services to the end customers on the other side of that DMARC. So that's a really critical thing in terms of ownership to help us define what that near edge scenario is. So um, let me move to the next portion, which would be the far edge. And so again, we move to the on-premises side. This is the remote location, and this is where things get really interesting. Um, and so again, the border there is meant to represent, let's say a layer two domain from a networking perspective. This is customer owned and managed IP space. This is customer owned and managed uh, infrastructure in the form of like hardware that supports your Kubernetes clusters, right? And so we've got boxes there. If you see visually represented, we've got boxes of various sizes to represent uh, multiple cluster sizes. So in some, for example, manufacturing use cases, they've carved out a portion of the data center to, um, sorry, a portion of the factory to act as a small data center. And they've got, you know, classic, you know, 2U machines racked up and they treat it like a data center. And those are very large clusters. We also have locations that have a single node, a single node cluster uh, to serve their uses as well. Uh, also there shown on the screen are three broad industries where we see the far edge playing, right? So you've got commercial, you've got industrial, and you've got public sector use cases. And we think the majority of the uh, edge, uh, the far edge use cases will fall under those three categories. And so the 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 clusters that are running in that space uh, typically obviously would support cloud native applications. 
Um, and those cloud native applications represent a transformational business value that's actually pushed to that location where it can do the best good. And many of these uh, use cases have the local Kubernetes clusters within the premises to actually aggregate data from uh, the IoT devices and sensors and such. And, and that's actually a great segue into the third segment of the edge. So, so far we've talked about near edge, we just covered far edge, and finally we've got what we call tiny edge. And I absolutely love this name. I, I heard this uh, naming convention uh, at our edge conference in the fall uh, given by uh, folks from Microsoft. And this is uh, really where the law of large numbers kicks in. So this space is early and we are encouraged by the yeoman's work being done by Kate Golden Ring and Edward Wong in this space. Both of those are uh, Microsoft uh, uh, employees. And under their leadership, Microsoft has introduced an upstream community called Ocri. Um, and Ocri is all about solving the problem that we have in the tiny space, the tiny edge, or the fixed function device management space. And it's really cool. And you know, as SUSE, we want to be involved in that, in that community as well. And we would encourage you to take a look at that. And I believe later in the day, there's, uh, or at the session, there's a talk by uh, Edric that speaks about Ocri. And so now that we have a definition, a working definition of the edge, let's actually talk about the three pillars that make up the solution for uh, managing Kubernetes at scale. So again, I want to come back to this. So you could have one Kubernetes cluster to manage, let's say, a thousand downstream clusters, and these could be globally, uh, ge geographically di di um, dispersed. Um, and so given the law of large numbers and the diversity brought to the table, we're seeing the three pillars that are required to address this management at scale challenge at the edge. And so the first pillar would be one uh, of the distro, right? And so we're very fortunate on the rancher side to have released um, K3S to the world. And it's a very popular distro. Literally with one command line, uh, you can have a CNCF certified distro running on very lightweight hardware. And so the, the distro is needed because importantly, it allows us to preserve, reallocate and extend our existing in investment in Kubernetes. And we can extend that, that learning, that skill set those resources to the edge where, where we need it to go. And second, we need a distro that thrives in those resource constrained environments, the re remote locations with limited connectivity, and also within uh, as a Kubernetes layer in some of the edge applications that we're seeing, appliances rather, sorry, the, app the appliances that we're seeing. And then the second pillar here is a lightweight operating system. So there's many options there where you have a lightweight uh, operating system that's container native or container native friendly. It's probably a better way to say that. And we believe this is required to provide a low attack footprint from a security perspective, and also more importantly, to allow us to manage the full life cycle of that operating system. Because when you're managing, let's say 7,500 7, or anything, you know, managing the life cycle of the operating system should be done in a Kubernetes way, right? And then lastly, the third pillar is management. And so for us on the rancher side, it's our rancher management platform, but more specifically, it's the abil ability to adopt a GitOps approach to managing downstream Kubernetes clusters at scale. And so people are precious. And those that understand our space, they understand we need to adopt technology that, uh, that allows us to leverage our skill set so that we can scale out our management capabilities to those large numbers of downstream clusters. And so we think that the GitOps approach is one that naturally fits the Kubernetes declarative model uh, to manage infrastructure quite nicely. And so when you look at all three of these pillars, we think this is the, the minimum set that you're going to need to have an effective uh, Kubernetes uh, at scale uh, management solution. And so again, Kubernetes management at scale with GitOps is great. A lightweight uh, distro such as K3S or, or any other um, related variants. Um, and then a lightweight operating system that's focused on the cloud native um, front end, um, the cloud native uh, space. And so when you look at it all together, you have that solution at the bottom it will allow you to attack and manage all three segments of the edge. So we've got the near edge and the telco space. That's more of a classic data center play with, you know, you know, small data centers or regional data centers. We can rack and stack at that point. That's something that we know very well. The things get really interesting when you come over to the far edge where you start deploying a lightweight version of Kubernetes, a lightweight operating system, and then managing that with a declarative GitOps source of truth behind, uh, you know, let's say 10,000 deployments. And then the tiny edge is emerging. Uh, the Acri project, we like it a lot inside uh, Rancher. And we want to, again, contribute to that community, but um, it's also very new, right? So there's a um, handful of protocols that we support on the industrial IoT space, and we wanna make sure we can mature uh, the capabilities or the adoption of those protocols that are heavily used in the, in the industrial IoT space. 
And so this is the complete solution. We think this is, is a win for, for the entire community, and we are going to be actively working on that. And so Ranch is going to be doing a lot of this work, and we ask that you join us uh, in the areas that we've outlined. We'd love to see the definition of the framework that I discussed uh, adopted, as we believe that it's going to be very meaningful to have discussions uh, that are um, efficient in guiding uh, us to the solutions that work. And overall, I think we should strive to remove the complexity that's inherent in our systems, right? And um, so with that, I just want to thank you for this opportunity. And we hope to see you face to face at the next KubeCon uh, going forward. So thank you again. Thank you again for your time and uh, have a great uh, conference and we'll see you soon.